Welcome to a Friday edition of Beyond the Arc. I'm John Gonzalez alongside our NBA insider, Bill Ryder. And Bill, I see you wearing your Barca kit there. Uh, yeah, solidarity you know, with Chavi. Yeah, we fired Chavi. We, they, those <laughs> SOBs. How are you feeling? He was, he was, he was on his way out and then they thought right. he was, gonna, he, it sounded like he was going to stay and now he's out again. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No, that's, it's, um, it is, it is a, uh, it's a farce. I don't even know who's the worst owner in the NBA right now. I was going to go Dolan, but no, I mean, isn't it always they, a what? Ishbia maybe, you know what? That's it. They saw what Ishbia was doing. They said, hold my beer. We've got something yeah. to top what's going on in Phoenix. Good call. Ishbia. Well, uh, Godspeed to Barca. Uh, We have a lot of basketball to discuss today later in the show. Charles Barkley is talking about what a mess things have become for inside the NBA and what might happen to the best studio show out there, gang. And then we'll also preview game two tonight of the Western Conference Finals. But first, game two of the Eastern Conference Finals last night, Celtics and Pacers did not go well for Indiana. Celtics (laughs) smacked them 126 to 110, take a 2-0 lead. Uh, a lot of things to get into here, Bill, up to and including the fact that Tyrese Halliburton looks like he re-injured that left hamstring that gave them significant problems after the All-Star break. And then yeah. Rick Carlisle in the, in the uh, fourth quarter, I mean, they were down you know, double digits, but we've seen so many double-digit leads uh, get erased this season in the NBA and also in the postseason. And he just waved the white flag and said, let's just go to Indiana because game three is our entire season now. Outside of Pascal Siakam, it felt like it was all surrender. I don't want to kick yeah. Halliburton while he's down, but he was figuratively absent, and now he is literally yeah. at, probably going to be absent. And now you're right, and it's I don't know if you concur with this, John. I'd be, I'd be really interested. And maybe I was a captain of the moment, but before Halliburton's hamstring injury in January, that sidelined him for I, I think ten games, but he just wasn't the same when he came back. Did not look the before same. that, yeah, like. Like, you know, we do these, like, what's the MVP battle look like in December or January, yeah. even though it's, I remember having Halliburton in sort of a three, four, some people thought a, a two, three, four range. I mean, he was a, I think he was a top five player at the time. So even if he's back and it sidelined him for months at that level, when he came yeah. back, even if he's back the series, it's, he's done, right? Maybe. He, he looked awesome at the beginning of the season through the in-season yeah. tournament. He was so good. And like, it was kind of like, oh, this is the Tyrese Talbert that was promised. And I know that a lot of people had some, some doubts about the Pacers and whether or not that they could, you know, keep that offense humming and play at the pace that they were playing. They proved that they can, that this is their identity, but he's quite clearly the engine that makes this team run and makes them competitive because Siakam was awesome last night. And then it was nobody. I mean, you and I did that's uh, a great point. Game HQ and it was yeah. like, you know, when, when you got Nemhard out there and you're like, yeah, Nemhard was okay. You're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, that's when you're done. That's funny. Yeah. And like Halliburton before he got injured, only eight shots. And I was like, oh, he doesn't look right. Or is this just like the not aggressive Halliburton? I think it was that. A little bit of A, a little bit of B. And then it turns a little out bit of both. Yeah. So if they can't go. And and I wanted to run this past you too, because all right, TJ McConnell said something during the in-game interview that I thought was really interesting where he said, hey, you know, they were getting out and running faster than us. And not a lot of teams yes. do that. And we, we talked about how like Pacers on, on the stat sheet, right? They shot roughly the same percentage as the Celtics. It was like 52%, 53% for both teams. And the Pacers yep. have been playing their game in the series. It's just that the Celtics have played it better. And Drew kind of said this after the game last night. The word chaos, chaotic, has been used a lot in the past couple of days to describe them. Is there an element of kind of returning that chaos with that smaller lineup? Does, does that kind of negate it somehow? Uh, sure. I mean, I guess chaos is chaos, right? Um, I think that we, just like them, I think they do a great job of having, uh, it seems like, control of chaos. Um, the way that they play, they, they move the ball, uh, they move bodies, and uh, they play fast. But we can also do that. Um, we can go small, we can go big, we can play fast, we can slow down and, and execute. But, uh, I think adding no shit out there was just a different element where, <clears throat> I mean, all five guys, just if we're switching or if we're staying where I'm in, uh, we're capable of doing so many different things. Bad style matchup for the Pacers, Bill. This is a bad it spot. For them. They, they have a team on the other side of the floor that can do what they do, and then also right. they're much better defensively. And, and that's the thing. I, the, when I, yeah, you're right. When I first saw the clip, I, I thought, yeah, chaos, but also. Boston can be chaotically attacking on defense, like the way that they swarm and they, I mean, they are more energetic, more physical, more impressive 
That, it's really interesting, John, because I know we, we've talked about this a lot, like how good are the Celtics and have they been tested and is Jason Tatum good enough? Maybe none of it, maybe none of it matters. Maybe Boston is so good and so deep and so adaptable. I don't think this will be true in the finals, but maybe I'm wrong. That whoever they play, and they've played some banged up teams, but whoever yeah. they play, they have so many answers that you don't need Tatum to be awesome. You don't need to play a lot of close games. You brought you. I mean, everyone knows now, but you were the first person to brought to my attention that they had the third highest net rate in NBA history, which is just I can't get it out of my brain. Yeah, maybe they're so good that they have an answer to everything. They have an answer to the Pacers. They have an answer to whether they're Tatum problems. They have whatever they. Maybe they're just maybe they're just that good, and there are no. And if, if that's true, the Pacers certainly don't have the answer. No, I mean the Pacers are in a lot of trouble, especially if Halliburton can't go in Game Three, and we'll find out. But it, it doesn't; it's not looking great. I'm glad that you brought up the Tatum thing uh, and how the 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 Celtics are so deep that they can sort of overcome this. So Jalen Brown's been really good in the postseason. Oh my god, been really so good, good in this series. He had 40 points last night, a tie to career playoff high, and it sort of papers over and masks the fact that Jason Tatum has not been good. Game one was probably his best game in a while, and he wasn't even that good in game one. Last night he shot nine for 20 on the same day that he made first team all NBA, which is like yes, it's such a it's such a bad look. It's like, oh, I'm one of the five best players in the NBA, and I have been invisible in this postseason. And I want to get into this with you because the play in the playoffs this season, his number, his shooting percentage is both from the four and from three are down significantly. He's shooting three and a half percent worse from the four and bill 11% worse from three. What? 27% or some astoundingly low 28%, 20, just under 27%. Yeah. I, so it's funny to bring up the, the, the uh, first team, you know, who else looks bad? The voters, even though I don't know that we got it wrong. And I put him I second. I would have done it too. I would have. Yeah. I, I, I put him second team in an excruciating decision and I got lucky, but I, I did not put Jalen Brown on my ballot and that feels misplaced. Now I, the Tatum thing is, it, you know, that it's come full circle and I like Doris, but when Doris is, is bringing up multiple times in the broadcast, how poor Tatum looks in a game where the Celtics are basically dominant. And th- even when yeah. the game was 11, 12, 13, Doris kept bringing it up. It's, and it's, what is he? Nine to 20. He said, this is where like box scores That's don't tell the story. Point. Yeah, he didn't play that well. I don't think he he didn't look that good. He nope. hit some shots and the game was out of hand. He just and it. Okay, let me let me pose a theory to you, and maybe it doesn't matter, but I think you would agree. I think we I think we'd be aligned that most championship teams have a star player, right? Luca for Dallas, even though there's Kyrie mm-hmm. and Anthony Edwards for whatever. Go down the list, and you need that star player to be the best player a few times, maybe more per series to win a series. I think Jalen Brown's just the star is the best player on, on Boston. I think that's maybe the real. And, and if you reframe it as Tatum's your second best player, whatever we all voted, I think Jalen Brown's the best, maybe the best player on this team. And if you just think of it as, as Tatum is, is the number two, you get a lot more forgiveness for, you can do things as cat. You can't do as ant right in the conference. Right. I think in the conference finals, maybe that's how I need to start looking at Jason Tatum. Jalen Brown certainly in the postseason has been better on paper. Yeah, you would think during the regular season that, I mean, again, had I, if I had had a vote, I would have put Jason Tatum on first team. And I also, as we discussed with Ashley, I would have had him just squeaking out Jalen Brunson for number five in the MVP race. And the reason Both why reasonable. I that, yeah. Yeah. And, and the reason why I was thinking that is because best player on the best team in the NBA, he gets a little bit of a nod. And now when you're looking at it through the prism of the playoffs, that's not the case. I mean, I, w- I wouldn't have, yes. like if, if you could have hindsight from here, from right now, I'd, I'd put Brunson ahead of him on both of those things because he has not been good in the playoffs, not just this season, but also in his career, his numbers tend to dip in the postseason from his regular season numbers, not nearly as dramatic as they are this season, but he's down about two percentage points uh, from the field and about two and a half percentage points from three in his career from the regular season to the postseason, And it's like, all right, you know, big game moments, right? Like we've seen him sort of disappear in the playoffs over various stretches when you would think yeah. that Boston Celtics would advance and challenge for a title and they haven't gotten one. And if they don't get one this year, there's going to be a lot of fingers pointed in his direction. It's a great point about Brunson in the playoffs. And I, and I guess that's why you do put it, put Tatum first team because 
Harden was a guy we eventually realized wasn't reliable in the playoffs, but it's not as if you could keep him off your ballots when he was being amazing in the regular season, just because you thought he was going to, you know, lay an egg in the playoffs. To your point, I wish I could remember it exactly, but I talked to Tom Haversho this morning on radio and he, whatever, did his deep dive research. So I'm going to yeah, misquote this, does. but he's I think it was, he's so good. I think it yeah. was in the last three years in crunch time and clutch time, excuse me, in the NBA, in the playoffs. So that is five minutes or less or over time yeah. and five points or closer. Uh, he basically measured efficiency numbers for every player that hit whatever statistical standard he thought was enough attempts. And in the last three years in the playoffs, Jason Tatum, 49 of 51 of the people that he looked at. So basically wow. one of the worst playoff players when it matters over a three year. And obviously the Celtics have been in a lot of playoff games. So whatever, it's going to be a big sample size. It's not as if they had one playoff run and he played poorly. They've yeah. been in the finals. They've been in the conference finals now twice, right? Over that, over that span. It's he's the new, I mean, it, he's the new James, James Harden or whoever you would put as the like guy that was great and couldn't be great in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, in those moments where you need him to step up and, and uh, have, you know, like to play like a superstar to play like a super max player where he not yeah. only vanishes, but it actively hurts you. Producer Aaron points out that he had the most turnovers for any playoff run in NBA that's, history in 2022. Right. And then there was this season when yeah. we were talking about how the offense, like in the rare moments when the Boston Celtics who had the best offense in the NBA this season, got into that clutch time moments where the offense would grind to a halt because it was like Jason Tatum hero ball time. And he wanted to prove that he could, you know, will them to victory and of qualified players. When we looked at it, only uh, Clay Thompson had been worse this season. So, you know, not like it's not only that he's not really performing, it's that he's kind of actively hurting them in these situations, but I did want to run one more, one more thing past you about him. So he's, you're right that like, Jalen Brown can be the best guy in the postseason and that helps the Celtics go, okay, well, we don't need Jason Tatum to like will us to victory. Cause in addition to Jalen Brown, we've got like a lot of other dudes who are really, we don't, Chris Stapps isn't even back yet and they're still right. really good. Yeah. Yeah. They're deep. But my thing about Jason Tatum is, and I want to see what your mileage is on this. He's always available. And his numbers are haven't been good, but availability is not nothing. Yeah. Like he always plays. So you look at teams like the Knicks, who yeah. are just like so banged up and and so exhausted, and nobody was available. Halliburton with his hamstring. Like you go down the list, and there's like teams that are dealing with injuries, and we talk about it all the time. It's postseason. Everybody's banged. This dude Everybody. is never banged up. He's always out there. And, and I'll say, look, you can you can pick at him. And I think that, I, I think we're I think we are doing that in a fair and reasonable way, even though it's critical. The guy rebounds, I mean, rebounds, right? Like the guy mm -hmm. does a lot plays of defense. things when he's out there. Yeah, plays defense. He puts up points. And you said this the other day, they count the same, right? Whenever they, they get scored. Now, again, you need your stars, I think, to score late in games sometimes, but not this Celtics mm -hmm. team. It's So that, that goes back to what I was saying. Like He might be in the perfect – what did he say in the regular season? I'm not going to get MVP consideration because we have such a good team. He's not an MVP. But he doesn't. Maybe the beauty of him is he doesn't need to be. He doesn't even have to be the best player in the playoffs because Drew Holiday. We could, you and I could do. Oh, so good. He's. I mean, so I know, a two-hour, a two-hour podcast. If we just talked about seven of these Celtics, he, yeah. dude, he's. How dumb does? Do, do, I mean, there's a lot of things here, but and we don't need to talk about this. But I just, I can't see him play and not think about the Milwaukee Bucks and John Morris. Me too. I know. I mean, wow. Like, because you won a championship with that guy as your second best player and, and yep. you decided that that model doesn't work, which right. right now, I mean, look, I'm a big Dame Willard fan and his offense is, well, it can be explosive, but Drew Holiday can do so many more things and he can, in a pinch, we've seen his offense this postseason. There's been plenty of games, including last night yes. and especially in game one, game yes. one, he was awesome offensively. And then- yep. Oh, by the way, second team all defense, and he'll lock down anybody you need one through four. Like he thwarted not single handedly, but pretty close Halliburton in game one. Yeah, and that is a big part of the reason the Celtics are going to win this series. I, probably they win anyway. But if Drew Holiday is not there, <laughs> the, the, the Pacers might win that game. Maybe I mean maybe. Yeah, dude, it's it is malpractice him, him be, by, it, by it is and, and i would love for them to be able to undo that and, s and send him back for all, for a lot of reasons <laughs> not just for the bucks but for the rest of the eastern conference because it would Fair. make the Celtics like whatever percentage point worse than they already are they're really good right 
when we talk about Drew Holiday, because I want to bring this back to Jason Tatum for just a second. There were moments last night where, you know, my my Celtics fan friends were like texting me and like being real angry about Siakam being the only guy out there and like the Celtics just leaving him open a lot of the time, you know, and like not playing good defense on him. On a night when Jason Tatum isn't himself and has in a postseason when Jason Tatum has not looked yeah. like himself offensively, wouldn't you want to see him be like, all right, I'm going to lock down. Yes. I, I got Siakam. That, I got this matchup. That's the biggest. And, and Doris kept bringing I think that's what triggered Doris. I don't know if you listen to that part of the broadcast, yeah. but yeah, I'm with you. You guys are right because it is the acquiescence. It is the, by the way, I've seen LeBron do this in the finals and recover. And I think sure. Halliburton's been doing it. It's human nature where you're down, you're sad, you're, you have doubts, you feel bad about yourself, whatever, to, to kind of go, go insular recede into yourself, but it's not acceptable as a basketball player. It's a great point. You're right. Like I can't shoot right now, but I'm going to, I'm going to D these guys up and I'm going to put in so much effort. He's just checking out sometimes on defense. He's not even present. He, earlier. I believe it was the last round against the Cavs. It might've been the heat, but it, it doesn't really matter. There was an, a post game interview where he was like, you know, I do more than just score. I'd like all my shots to fall, but uh, I'm, you know, multi-talented. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. He was, he was explaining that he can do all these other things on the floor and you're right. He's a good rebounder. It was the Cavs. Uh, he, he's a good re rebounder. He's a good passer. Um, yeah. he's, he is a very good defender. I would like to, okay, your shot's not falling. Everybody knows it and you know it too. Let's see more of these other things, uh, while you're trying to figure out what the hell's going on with you offensively. And by the way, and I mentioned this too, there were moments in that Cavs series where, He'd have like he'd have a mismatch, and I'm like, all right, you got to like, Tristan Thompson. There were switches onto Tristan Thompson where I'm like, your shot's not falling. Take that guy to the hole. It's 2024. He's still playing in the NBA. He's a thousand <laughs> years old. Get an easy, get an easy shot yeah. at the rim, or get a foul and go to the foul line. Instead, he's shooting step back threes. I'm like, this is and, not and rocket gets, science. And to bring this full circle, I love this point because he can, he has the benefit of being able to do what you're saying. You know who doesn't? Anthony Edwards. You better play defense right, on Kyrie. Right. You better help your teammates yep. get easy shots. And by the way, you better score thirty score. points. If you Tatum doesn't is on a team where he doesn't have to do everything. And so to your point, just do the things, the other things, and it will all be okay. And then your shot will probably get figured out too, because we're human beings and like the mental stuff matters. We'll see. We'll see uh, if he can get on track. We've got game three in Indiana on Saturday. Very interesting game. Obviously, as we mentioned. That's the Pacers whole season. They haven't lost at home yet. It's over. That's the good news. Bad news is Celtics haven't lost on the road yet. Celtics are minus seven Bro. favorites in that one. Yeah. They're minus and seven. It's over. Yeah, dude. I know. Is it I a know. gentleman but, sweep or a sweep? Gentleman I sweep. Think it's a sweep. I think you it's a do. sweep. Right. If, even if Halliburton comes back, like how diminished is he going to be? Yeah, we, see, we saw how bad that hamstring hampered him and he didn't look right after the, after the all-star break. And now if he yeah. comes back and he's like cobbling up and down the floor, I don't know. I hope it does. I hope it doesn't go that way. Uh, Cause I, as I mentioned, I have some, I think you're right. organization, but fingers right. crossed for them. All right, we're going to take a break. And then on the other side, we're going to discuss uh, a matter that no, nobody's excited about here inside the NBA on TNT might be going away. Charles Barkley had some thoughts on that on the Dan Patrick show. We'll discuss that on Beyond the Arc coming up. The Champions League final. This is as big as it gets. The kings of the Champions League. Dorman are into the final. Can't let us stop me now. This is the final round. All his dreams coming true. Dorman versus Real Madrid in the UEFA Champions League final on CBS and streaming live on Paramount+. Plus. Go Dortmund! If you're not, if you're I'm sorry, if you're listening to this podcast, you don't know what I'm talking about. But on the on the on the stream, yeah, yeah, on YouTube, uh, that was a Champions League promo. It was oh, a Champions League promo for Dortmund and Real Madrid. Who Dortmund somehow got into the Champions League final with <laughs> bananas? How did Barcelona make it get there? As is we our are. producer Aaron. Um, by the way, I looked just for fun because London is probably my favorite city. I, not like I can go because it, it's right in the middle of the NBA playoffs, but I just looked I to see what the what the tickets were to get into the Champions you, League final in Wembley. Do you want to guess? Yeah, Cheapest I'm going to guess, but you can you can do you can dude. I won't. You can do the show from there. So my son wants to go to the Euros. My wife is taking him to Germany. I'll, I won't be there in Stuttgart, and there's 600 euros to get in. So I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say 900 euros. It was. Twenty three fifty dollars. 
What? Yes, for the cheapest ticket for, at the top of Wembley. To get in. To get in. Oh, he- the at Wembley. Yeah. Hell no. What is the most you would pay? So if like if Barcelona went to a Champions League final, right. Cubs World Series doesn't count because I got to – the nice people at Fox Sports just gave me tickets even though I just left that company to come here during the World Series. But what is the most you would pay if – the you could get Sixers credentials. But like for the thought exercise, for a team you love in a moment like that, what is the most you would pay? That's a great question. Um, yeah, I, like if it was a game I was super excited – well – I mean, the Phillies are the best team in baseball right now. And okay. I was looking at, um, you know, like my buddies and I have gone to the World Series last year. We went to the NLCS. Those tickets in in uh, in Arizona were like maybe 400 bucks. It wasn't that bad. That bad. Comparatively. Yeah, yeah. comparatively. Um, but if the Phillies were in the World Series. Yeah, Game 7 Phillies. Yeah, like, 1,500 bucks probably. Yeah, right. Um, I, I couldn't go to 2,300. Whatever it is, no, that's a that's think. that's a but that's outside of my pay scale. That's um, outrageous. Last year, last year, I I uh, I like to do soccer tourism, and my buddies and I took a little soccer trip last year, and I went to the first Champions League game uh, at uh, Newcastle United in twenty years. They played PSG. Oh, you told me about this, yeah, and cool. it was unbelievable. And I, it was like for that, I would have paid any amount of money because, in retrospect, it was like the experience was worth every right. cent that we spent to go. So. Um, Anyway, if anybody's looking to go to the Champions League final, there you go. All right. Um, by yeah, you the way, can take find... John. You can take John if you'll pay for his ticket. You can hang out with John. Take me with you. Uh, and be sure to check out all of our <laughs> soccer coverage, our football coverage uh, right here at CBS Sports. All right. Find us wherever you get your favorite podcast. Please download, subscribe, and leave a review. As I mentioned before the break, inside the NBA, as, as a lot of people know, might be in jeopardy because the new NBA deal looks like it's going to be with NBC and Amazon, which will leave and ESPN, which will leave TNT in the lurch for the first time in forever. They've had the NBA forever oh, and they've had the NBA inside the NBA tv show forever and i am a massive fan of it as you are i yeah, think a lot yes. of people are uh and it's just hey, like can i tell you something R- real quick sorry. my wife Lori, does not care about sports i once told her not that long ago that the super bowl was played on an island called less orleans off of new orleans every year just to mess with her so i could tell that story on the radio and then sleep on the couch for a week which i uh, yeah. <laughs> which i did so i just want to fr- she's not a sports fan right i mean whatever she'll put it on she actually likes barcelona soccer but she doesn't. She doesn't care. She watches the NBA and TNT when I have it on because she finds them so funny. She doesn't even care amazing. about basketball, and the show is so good. She's watching the show. That's how good the show it's is. An, it's an amazing, amazing show, and everybody's really bummed out about this, including Charles Barkley, who was on Dan Patrick's show the other day to discuss the state of inside the NBA. And Dan asked him, "Hey, Charles, how's morale?" And Charles went, "Morale sucks." And then he explained what might happen to the show in maybe a best case scenario. Well, I've talked to the guys about everybody signing with my production company because I have my own production company. And uh, I want to, I, I would love to do that if, if we lose it. But I have definitely had, actually somebody suggested that to me, to be honest with you, on the internet. So why don't Charles Barkley sign these three guys, four guys total, this his production company and sell it? I'm like, that's a great idea. But like I say, you know, we're just sitting back waiting on these people. <laughs> on the I internet. Like the idea, <laughs> real quick, uh, if you're listening to us on a podcast, I highly encourage you to go to our YouTube page at Beyond the Arc CBS to see Charles in his grandma glasses talking Amazing. about this. He looked, he, he's real close to the camera and he's wearing his, a, my grandmother's glasses. Best. I'm pretty sure he borrowed them from her. Um, <laughs> I hope this happens. I hope this happens because not having inside the NBA in our lives would suck. It is the best show on television. So I, every day, especially in the playoffs, but when I, re- cause in the playoffs, you can get extra TNT days, right? Cause, cause they get, they yeah. have the Western conference that I realize it's an ESPN game. I just get bum- a little part of me is bummed out. I don't, like, I don't want to pick on Doris and JJ. It's hard to, it's hard to get chemistry overnight. That's not, it takes wraps and time. I'm with you, man. Like the, I'm, I am disappointed when I wake up and I have to, and I like Pacers Boston. Okay. But I realize I don't get to see that show. The idea that I'll never see it again. It's the thing is if you're Adam Silver, you can't care, right? Like you, it's his job. You got to get the most money for right. everybody. 
and grow the sport well, as best you can. I, I think that's probably NBC and, and broadcast TV, unfortunately. And I, and I get, I get, yeah, what you're saying. I mean, if you're Adam Silver, your number one thing is I'm trying to make as much money and grow the sport as big as I can, one, as much money for everybody involved as yeah. possible. The cap is going to go through the roof, by the way, because oh my God. Deal. I was looking yeah. at um, the projections. Uh, Bobby Marks from ESPN had the projections for the new su- five year Supermax. I, I haven't the, seen it. Oh, dude, the fifth year, the fifth year of a new Supermax is going to be in the, in the 95. Please. Oh, okay. I was gonna guess yeah, hundred, so I would be glad I heard you. But I would have yeah, guessed ninety, like around ninety-five million. <laughs> I was like, what are, it's just absurd. It's absurd. Um, but so I, I get it. Like, they want more money. That's it. We yeah. live in a capitalist society. Okay, great. But from a consumer standpoint, and I say this all the time, basketball is entertainment, and that show is so damn entertaining. It'll be Aaron saying a hundred million within six or seven years. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna explode. But it's crazy. We. We as consumers, not only like the basketball component, but that show, which is only nominally about basketball, is just such an awesome like dessert item yeah. after the game because they do yes. talk about the game, but then they go off on these incredible tangents, and you're like, "What is this that I'm watching?" But I can't turn it's away. It's too good. So funny. They actually like each other. They they go at each other. It, it it's, and I was thinking about this this morning. Because the idea of, of, of Chuck doing his production company, look, there are complications. We don't know the – just Chuck – maybe he knows the contract status of all of his colleagues. And yeah. then Aaron made this point. You have to hire everybody from your crew, the producers. All those things matter behind the scenes. And do they feel like they have job security? Are they going to have jobs? Because Chuck said he's, you know, he's, they have mortgages. But are, are you going to move over your pro- producers from the NBA to produce college football, which is what TNT has licensed from ESPN? But let's say you can get the show on the air. Let's say Chuck could do this. How long do you think they're actually going to do it? Because it's not the show's not that good when those guys take a night off. This show will not continue as the show we're talking about whenever those guys, Chuck in particular, doesn't want it. We got five years left, do you think, of this show? Three? I, I don't know, but I, I'll take as many as you can get. Um, I Fair. Back when I worked at a previous stop, I did a story on the B team, on Lefko and Candace. I, I actually really like Candace. Lefko's Parker. really good. good. Lefko is yeah. really good. Vince Carter yeah. is really good. Jamal Crawford is awesome. He, like they really it, have hits. Good. Th- their B team is a better show than I think ESPN's current show. Yes. But it's still, it's like the yeah. old, I, ha- do you know who Wright Thompson is? Do you know Wright Thompson, the writer? Yeah. Wright Thompson was my college roommate. And I took Wright's job at the Kansas City Star, which was a big deal at the time. And when, and I actually, he just moved. I never know where to live. So he let me sublease. He let me basically live in his apartment for two weeks. And Wright had a huge reputation, right? Right, right. Is a star. And what a, what a, can I swear on this thing? What a jerk. You know, like, right. When I showed up, his apartment was empty, except for he found the biggest shoes. They were like shack shoes. He left two empty shoes, as in, good luck filling my shoes. Oh, wow. That, yeah, what a move, right? What an asshole. I love you, right? <laughs> um, that's the problem with, with following that show. I'm with you on the people you mentioned. They'll be great. But the shoes they have to fill are too too big. No, it's an un. It'll be unfair. It, you'll you'll be set up to fail. I think whoever you are trying to follow, Chuck and Shaq and Kenny and, and Ernie, it's it's impossible. I um, yeah. So when I did that story, it was all about like how do you do that? Like how do you follow the best show, the best studio show, probably oh, ever? Wow. And like I I agree with you. I think that B team is better than any L any other studio show anywhere else. Yeah. Because they're in the shadow of the A team, it's like right. what's happening in the A team tonight. We're getting like just a really good show in its own right, but they don't they can't recreate what the A team does. They got to do their own thing. And Candace is so good at it, and Jamal is such a nice dude, and and Vince Carter, as I said, uh, and Lefko, like they're all really good, but they're not Ernie and Shaq and Kenny and Charles. And Magic. so, like, yeah. so. Just some things that have happened this year on that show that I have loved. Uh, I think I put it in our group chat, but Charles Barkley demonstrating how to fall out of nowhere w- was just <laughs> ridiculous. And just like, I couldn't stop laughing. I watched it multiple times. And then when the movie, the fall guy came out, it's out in theaters. Now uh, I have no stake in it. I have seen it. It's pretty good. Um, have you seen it? Not- you went to a movie. I have seen it. I went to a, an actual movie. Uh, I want- did you come good. down? Is there a theater up where you live or did you come down the hill? 
There is. There's. We have supermarkets and gas stations. It's very remote. And everything. We do, <laughs> I, mean, I, we, just, we, I drive no. up there. You and there's like nothing around except whales. I can around. see whales swimming. It's very actually. There is at the lighthouse. There, <laughs> there are people who post up for months and just track the whale migration. That, yeah, that's that where I take my kids to hang out. Happens. I know. Where I, I live in LA, it's very, very remote, remote. But there is. There's a stoplight. Yeah, got it. only a couple though. <laughs> literally. What's the so major league like? He's got uniforms and everything. All right, got it. <laughs> there's a theater, and I went to the theater, and I saw the fall guy. Anyway, the whole point of this is when the movie came out, these chuckleheads on Inside the NBA decided to do a whole stuntman thing, and it was like 10 minutes of the show long. I missed this one. Where You have to look it up. It's I'll watch unbelievable. it. unbelievable. Where they're like doing falls inside, and like Ernie comes out of nowhere with like a glass bottle and hits Shaq, but it's not glass, oh, right? Like I did see that. I did I didn't know the context. It's on social media. Hilarious. <laughs> so <laughs> this is what we're going to, I mean, this is what we need in our lives. Are, so do you care? Like, would there be, uh, let's say that they do a Shaq is saying, right? He, he has, he produces it. They do the same show and they just sell it to Amazon or NBC. Who do you want? Who do you, does it matter where it goes? Is there a better cultural fit? Amazon? Um, Cause you can just do anything. Having worked at, an RSN for NBC, it's pretty buttoned up. It's pretty corporate. I would imagine the, the, the whole company is pretty buttoned up. So I would imagine that they would kind of like suck the fun out of it somehow. Right. Whereas like, right. and, and you know what, I was reading a story, the athletic had a story on this today uh, that people should check out where Kenny and, and some of the producers for the show were like, even if we could keep the team together, would they allow us to do the show? Because those guys don't go to production meetings. They, like, there's right. no script. They just know we're going to talk about. Here's four topics that we're going to talk about, and they might get to one of them be before one of them derails it. You know, he's earning his job, by the way, to navigate that. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah, a, like he's unbelievable at that. And let so, me ask you this: I know. Would, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, would you have the ability to do it? I don't know. I think if if, if Chuck's producing it, maybe. We've seen over the years ESPN be willing to just move on from from people in that space when when their when their shows haven't worked. Is there a world where if this actually happened? ESPN would just because they brought in Pat McAfee, which is not on brand for them necessarily. And they're just like, we will pay for Chuck's production company, and we'll just blow out our pre and post game, and we'll just put this on our on our waves. Would ESPN I, let them do that? I would have been skeptical before McAfee. Now I guess it's yeah, a I mean, possibility. But it, whether it's Amazon or NBC or ESPN, somebody somewhere, please buy this show and save it for those of us who love it and don't want it to go away. All right. Uh, we're going to take a break and then we will preview tonight's game two of the Western Conference Finals before the Wolves or between the Wolves and the Mavericks. It's beyond the arc. And we'll be back in a second. The UEFA Champions League final. This is as big as it gets. This is the final round. The kings of the Champions League. Dortmund versus Real Madrid in the UEFA Champions League final, streaming live on Paramount Plus. All right, welcome back to Beyond the Arc. John and Bill wrapping up a Friday episode. We've got game two of the Wolves and Mavericks Western Conference finals tonight. Mavs are up 1-0 in that series. Wolves are favored tonight by five and a half, Bill. Uh, Mavs won that first game, as we mentioned, snapped a uh, losing streak of losing game ones in their last five series. So they finally got yep. ahead here. Uh, how do we feel about tonight? Uh, look, I, I'm glad. I, I think the Timberwolves are going to win. I hope they win because I would like a close series. Though I, I suppose based on the Denver series, maybe nothing matters in terms of who wins where and what order and everything's possible. Yeah, it feels like you're going to get more Gobert minutes out there. It feels like you're going to get, I think, a better Anthony Edwards. We have not seen Luka be remarkable every single game, so maybe they find a way to somewhat neutralize him and or, you know, Kyrie's so good that if he really locks Kyrie in. Really he really And from the, from, from the jump, right? From, so I, I'm hoping it's Minnesota, but neither outcome would su surprise me. That Kyrie game was probably his. I went back and looked at his game log from the postseason. That was probably his best game since the first round because OKC did a pretty good job on him. There was a couple of flashes in the second round, but I would say that that was probably his best game. It, it was interesting to hear the Wolves talk about game one afterwards because Chris Finch was like, 
saying that they had a really rough film session and like really were breaking down what was wrong here. They, they only gave up and I say only, but you know, it's 108 points, right? Which for most teams yeah. against Luca and Kyrie, you'd feel pretty good about it. The wolves. When they're Nas Reed, too. Yeah. Yeah. And Nas Reed was like too many. We gave up too many because during the regular season, they held uh, in their games against the Mavs, they held the Mavs to uh, 103 points per game. So 108 obviously is more, and they were not very excited about that. But yeah, I think I'm, all those I'm games there. were before the trades, right? I think they played them in their entirety. I think so. Yeah, I, think so. I mean, yeah, it's it's. It, but you're right. Like, and as we've discussed, they they held Denver to 90 in that final game. I mean, they are capable of they being are capable outstanding of on that side of the ball. Obviously, I mean, Jaden McDaniels. I want to see how he responds against Luca tonight. I want to see how Ant does against Kyrie tonight. And then offensively from the Wolves, I mean, it's not really their game. I get why they did it, but they shot 49 threes in game yeah. one, which was way more than half of their field goal attempts. And like, are they that scared of the Mavs rim protection? I think a little that. Do you think it was a little bit just they were tired and burned out or a little bit of a letdown? I mean, Anthony Edwards said he was tired, which you, okay, I, I get it, but. You know, maybe they just maybe it was is the the path of least resistance, just jacking up some threes instead of that, working that offense the, getting to the I paint. Think that what, I think the Mavs were giving it to them, and they were happy to take it. And then yeah. maybe in retrospect, they go, "Yeah, maybe we need to force the issue here a little bit, yeah, and take the it, fight to them." Because if I'm the Mavs, I'm thrilled if they if we turn them into jump shooters. A hundred percent. No. Yeah, like, the game plan it, or, or accidental game plan worked. What yeah, did they shoot? Yeah. What did they shoot from three of that game? Like they were like, I don't remember. Look, thirty, like yeah, like thirty six percent. You know, so just slightly above league average. I mean, league yeah, average. that's that's a win for the that yeah, that's a that's a yeah. league, that's a win for the Mavs. So yeah, uh, literally. So we'll see if they make the adjustment tonight. Uh, I believe you and I are both on post game. I think you have pre with Avery, and then I have halftime. So everybody should check us out on CBS Sports HQ. We'll be talking about I mean, a sports coat. Western Conference. Oh, He's not going to oh, wear his sure. Barca kit. He's going to put not. on a shirt and a jacket. Be nice. I'll dress uh, up. And we're very excited for and tonight's game. That's going to do it uh, for us today on a Friday. We're going to be back at it on Monday with Ashley to review this weekend's Eastern and Western Conference games. But for now, for our NBA insider, Bill Ryder, I'm John Gonzalez. Thank you for listening, everybody, and have a great weekend.